That one being Trish Stratus. About time, in my opinion. I mean, it's still a little young, I think. But then Edge got in the following year, and it makes sense. But the only downside to this, I believe, is this is not being held in Toronto. That would be perfect to have Trisha inducted there. But overall, you know, back when the women's title was actually relevant and actually not with the Divas Division being a piss break to some people, to where the Divas Division was actually amazing. I mean, there was cage matches, there was fucking hardcore matches, there was fucking Chicago street fights, I remember, triple fret matches, which, you know, some of those matches types we'd have today in the Divas Division. But uh, then you have, we didn't have a butterfly belt back then. We had an actual belt that meant something. And, uh, ironically enough, one of the few females to hold the hardcore title. Talked about that a little bit earlier. Trish Stratus was actually, I believe it was the thing with uh, Bubba Ray and Stevie Richards. It was actually during a women's title match, I believe, and they just came out, had a clusterfuck, a billion people started pinning people like the hardcore title is. It's great. It's awesome. You can't explain it. You had to be there. And Trish somehow pins, I don't remember who she pinned, but she pinned somebody and became the hardcore champion. And Bubba then got doused and blinded with uh, a fire extinguisher and mistakenly powerbombed Trish through a table when she he met it with, he thought it would be jazz or whatever at the time. <laughs> then lost the belt. I heard I was like that all the time. Shit happened, you had to be there, you had to watch it, you had to remember it. You can YouTube it for all I care. But the hardcore title was honestly one of the best things back in the day. And I miss it. I really do. But overall, Trish, I mean, what the longest... I wouldn't say longest reigning women's champion. Because of, obviously, Moolah. But the, lo the person that held it the most times. I mean, the belt had to be retired before, honestly, Trish could hold it a few more times, I believe. But uh, Trish retired with the belt in Montreal. With the sharpshooter on Leah. And Lita retired, you know, the year after with bullshit, with crime time. <laughs> but, uh, Trish overall, just one of the pioneers of the women's division in the more uh, recent years, I should, I should say. And honestly, this is long overdue, much like this entire class is. Now, earlier we talked about Bob Blackland's reign. But there's a guy that even surpassed him, and surpassed Hulk Hogan, and surpassed whoever the hell else held the belt longer. Let's see him, Punk. And that man is a man that honestly I thought would never happen. I never thought the day would come to where this would actually happen. And I am so happy. I was happy. I'm art the fuck out, honestly. And I don't do that often. When they actually... I didn't even know it was on ESPN. Uh, when they announced the news. I watched it like a casual fan. I thought, well, ESPN always does stuff anyway, so I'm not going to deal with that. And so do other dirt sheets and other things, even though I'm not one to say that I've been a spoiler over the past. And I kept this under wraps. This is why I probably did this one a long time. I left it for a long time. That is because Bruno Sammartino is in the Hall of Fame. And like I said before, not only one of the longer reigning people to surpass CM Punk recently, as of recent, well, his recent reign, and, you know, still hold it more, but the combined total, I, I, I'm not sure if I'm right, but it was a good eight or nine years at the most with the combined two reigns, along this first one was six years, I think, or eight years or whatever it was. For, you know, to be fair, this was when they didn't have a lot of big stars and it was acceptable. I think Bruno was actually one of the first people to hold the title, first winning it from the late, great nature boy, Buddy Rogers, not Ric Flair. People always associate nature boy with Ric Flair, but, you know, you look at your history. It was there to begin with. But, Bruno honestly... Oh my god. I, I could do another one on him. I think I did a majority of one on, on Mick Foley for fuck's sake. But, um... 
To be honest, and this is not to joke on the recent heart attack of Jerry the King Lawler, but uh, before the heart attack, heart attack, Lawler was losing his touch. And Bruno did commentary for a while. I would honestly pick Bruno over Lawler at that time. Of course, Lawler's got better after the heart attack, uh, commentary-wise, because he wasn't the same old heel. And much like a uh, Jerry Lawler, Michael Cole team, or a Jerry Lawler, uh, JR team, you know, Bruno was honestly the guy that would be antagonized by Jesse the Body Ventura, as I remember several times, and it was brilliant. Because if you get your heel heat, doesn't matter if it's commentary in the ring on the mic, you did your job. And if those need an antagonist, and as Bruno was amazing as a color commentator, granted it was stale at the time. And granted, it was better than a Lawler. I think people said, oh, I'd have Bruno over Lawler on commentary every, any day. But keep in mind, this was before, before the heart attack. <laughs> and of course, Lawler's got better. But uh, Bruno overall, he could do it all. I think even his son was in WrestleMania, uh, David. And he didn't last long. He was like the, the uh, speaking of David, David Flair. <laughs> Except uh, 17, the... Uh, Sabatino's son lasted longer than Flair's, I believe, not counting WCW. But Bruno overall, what can you not... You cannot say anything bad about the guy. Except for the old grudges keeping him out of the Hall of Fame. Much like Randy Savage, who should be inducted in my mind, probably will be in the next few weeks. I'll, I'll be surprised if I predicted that. And I don't usually predict Hall of Famers. I'm excited. It's, it's a kid in a candy store for me. It's always the greatest time of the year, so is WrestleMania. But Bruno San Martino, I believe there are some stipulations to this, and uh, I, I'm not sure if I am right, but I believe uh, McMahon and San Martino will not be conversing uh, for the entire weekend. But then it changed to um, them actually having a sit-down conversation, and there was an actual interview with uh, uh, Triple H and San Martino that was golden. And I, I didn't see it, and I need to see it, but it was golden. And I mean, it's those moments like this where you have to just fucking, oh my, you, there's no words. But at the same time, this is a great move by Hunter, and this is honestly the what why I I love him as a uh, CEO, CEO, COO, whatever his title is. It's for business, not personal gain, not personal grudges. This this is one of the oldest hatchets that have had to be buried since Montreal. And it's about damn time it did. Oh my god, about time it did. For our final inductee, though, um, for right now, I mean, there will be a few more in the next few weeks, but 